Okay, here's the QB78 Deluxe. This is actually one step above the standard QB78. And the difference is when you get the gun, the Deluxe, it's going to have fiber optics on it, front and rear sight, and it's going to have this uh, kind of like gold finish on the bolt and the trigger here. So the scope, it didn't come with a scope or a muzzle brake. I put the muzzle brake on. Very easy to put on, by the way. So the standard one is just going to have your uh, standard sights, not fiber optic. And it's going to be black in this area and this area right here. Now, if this rifle was ordered stock just the way it is as a deluxe, it wouldn't come with the bolt probe kit. Which is, a, which is a bolt probe that feeds the pellet rather than just a tubular looking type thing. On the stock rifle you'll get one. Uh, the QB78 Deluxe and the QB78 come with a stock tubular type uh, bolt probe. And it's nice to have the, the long skinny bolt probe so you can push the pellets in there really good. And it does increase the velocity just a little bit. Let me uh, tell you here what, what you get here. Okay, so when you, uh, when you get the rifle, for instance, let's say you get the, the Deluxe that I have here, and you get the XP bolt kit, that comes also with the seal kit. And in that seal kit, um, and, well, the bolt kit and the seal kit together gives you an extra 100 FPS but at the expense of uh, 50 shots for two CO2s rather than 60. Now the difference between just the XP seal kit and the XP bolt kit is the XP bolt kit comes with the seal kit, which is this right here. And all this does is if you had a stock QB78 Deluxe or just a QB78 Standard, if you notice in here, of what it looks like to be plastic tubing cut right here. This piece goes into the air port right there that goes into the rifle and that's kind of wide there so it allows more airflow into there. So if you just got the seal kit you know you get 60 FPS more. Um, if you got the bolt kit that comes with the bolt and this right here. So basically if, if it's just if you get the rifle and it's perfectly stock with no kits coming with it it's probably going to shoot I'd say probably over 60 shots. You'll probably get maybe 70 good shots but you'll have a lower velocity. So as far as velocities let me show you what I'm talking about here. And then I'll show you some of the accuracy tests I did, even though it hasn't been broken in yet. So let's take a standard grain weight pellet, like a 7.87 grain. That's doing about 689. Now the stock rifle, without any kit or anything in it, would be somewhere around 600 or something like that. So let me go down to list here and show you what I got. Um because I like the bolt probe so I didn't mind having less shots per fill and it is pretty much a true 50 shots for two CO2's good shots so a 21 grain here pellet I was shooting these are the pile drivers 510 feet per second 15 grain pellet these are HN and Sniper 570 uh, JSB Monsters 13.4 grain, 597. H&N uh, Barracuda, 634. GSB, 10.34 grain, or Air Arms, pretty much the same pellet. These are uh, 647 feet per second. Um, this here is uh, Field Target Trophy H&N, 683. 8.5 grain, that's the Sniper Medium by H&N. 8.44 that's Air Arms Field that's uh, 686. 
Oh, by the way, the 8.5 grain is 675. Uh, 7.87 grain, that's uh, JSB exact, 689 feet per second. Uh, 7.33, that's the air arms, round nose, or it could be your JSB RS pellet. And the wad cutters, I use some light ones here. 7 grain R10 wad cutter, 724. Uh, 5.25 grain competition alloy, lead free wad cutter, 774. And Crossman SSP wad, uh, wad cutter, it's actually a wad cutter hollow point type belt. 821 feet per second. Um, so what you see here, I could add an additional 30 feet per second, but I probably don't necessarily need higher velocity. I think I'm fine with these velocities because of the fact that I usually shoot 500 FPS rifles for fun and for accuracy. So it really doesn't matter to me too much. But uh, the trigger is really sweet. It's so good. It almost has the braking uh, type feel of my 747 which can be lowered down to one pound of, of uh, trigger pull. This trigger here is is almost like breaking a small piece of glass. You know that microscope glass that you put under microscopes that really thin stuff? Well, that's how this trigger feels. It feels like you break one of them things. It's almost you can't you can almost not predict when it's going to go off, which is really sweet. So you can line up your target and you can pull very very gently take out that little bit of slack and then pull it to the rear just a little bit and it'll go off and you won't know when it's going to go off. So kind of like a surprise break, uh, which is really nice. It's a really sweet trigger. So this one here is about, uh, compared to the Daisy 953, this trigger, comparing the Daisy 953 on a scale from 1 to 10, this trigger would probably be about a 10. And the Daisy 953 would probably be a, about a 5. So that's the difference I'm talking with this trigger. The trigger is just absolutely amazing. Um, you'd have to feel it uh, to know what I'm talking about. And that's a stock trigger. And uh, even if it is a 4-pound pole or a 3-pound pole, my gosh, you can hardly tell. So that's one of the benefits of that. So, But anyway... Um, you know, if, if I wanted to give it another 30 feet per second, which would be a total of 130 with all the kits in it, I could install an XP valve kit, which is a high flow valve um, that would uh, be about 40 shots for two CO2. So I don't want to go that route because of the fact that I don't really care about power. So if I got an extra 30 feet per second, my fastest pellet would be 850, but I don't really care about light pellets because the fact that they lose all their energy pretty much uh, right away as soon as they come out of the barrel. So even though the velocity is impressive, they lose velocity very, very quickly. But say like I had this pellet here, you know, the pile driver is going, going 510, so it would, get, it would get up to be like uh, around 550 or something like that. But... Uh, it's not really necessary. I think uh, 500 is fine for the heaviest 177 pellet. So it'll get you out there if you have a good scope. Um, now for the accuracy I wanted to show you guys. For accuracy what we got here. Now when you get a rifle out of the box you can't expect accuracy right away because of the simple fact that you're still breaking it in. And you have to account for the CO2 gas, you have to account for the recovery. So when you fire your first shot, of course, you're, you're going to let it repressurize until you get to your second shot. But on shots 0 through 30, this is a quarter inch dot. I was keeping it about half dime or under groups right here. These are five shot groups right here. Um, shot 50 right here. Uh, the pellet started falling a quarter inch down, and that's because of the CO2. But still, fairly good accuracy. So this pellet here is the Air Arms uh, 10.34 grain, by the way. 
So it just loves them. Here's another one right here. This one was after 63 shots and it's still grouping really well. So, and then this is uh, 69 shots right here. I aimed for this and it hit down here. So I stopped the test because of the fact that it's just, it just doesn't have anything left in it. So basically, I'm thinking, you know, you could get away with 60 shots if you want. You just have to remember that somewhere between 0 and 50 or 60 shots, you're going to drop about a quarter inch. That's all you have to remember. But with mill dot uh, scopes and stuff, it probably shouldn't matter. So out of the box, if you look at this right here and compare that to the quarter inch uh, dot here, that is pretty impressive at 15 yards, I would say. So this one uh, is probably going to be able to go after uh, quarter inch dots at 15 yards once it gets broke in. And I find uh, you know the best pellet I can for it. So, But uh, she likes heavy, good tight pellets. So cheap ones really don't work too well on this one. So it wants the premium stuff so far. That's in my tests I found that out. Now, let's say that you don't want to upgrade. Let's say you want just bone stock, which wouldn't be any of these three right here. What you want to do is uh, you want to at least get the seal kit because of the fact that you got some spare seals in here. Even if you don't use the performance seals, which are these, you know, which are wide right here that give you uh, more airflow. Even if you don't use them, you could use these other ones here. So you can keep the flow restricted if you want to get the more shots. But you do need some of these other ones in case something happens where you have a leak. You always got plenty of parts here. So, And that's one thing good about air, Archer air guns is they have all the parts you need. As a matter of fact, this whole rifle that you're looking at right here can be totally customized any way you want. You could even build your own stock for it. Uh, you could cut the barrel and recrown it, cut it right about here, put on your own muzzle brake or silencer. You could do that. But when you hold this rifle, it feels uh, it's very heavy. It feels just like a 22 rifle. It feels just as solid. And you got the rubber uh, butt pad back here, which is kind of nice. So if you take care of the wood properly and you keep, take care of the metal, it's going to look really nice. What I'm going to do is, uh, I left the sight on here for now, but if I want to, I could take that rear sight off. But I decided to leave it on here for now. So there's a lot of different upgrades. You could get a side lever on here. You could, you could buy a Picatinny rail for here. You could buy the repeater kit, which uh, will stack up about this high. So the scope is going to come up a little bit, and then you're going to have uh, some... Uh, Benjamin type uh, pellet clips that, that will work with it and stuff like that. So the difference between the QB78 here and the QB79 is the QB79 is going to chop the stock off right about here. So the stock will end right here and then you'll have a connector port right here that you can connect about four different types of tanks. Anything from a tiny CO2 to a big uh, H. PA high pressure air tank. Um, the, air, the high pressure air tanks are nice because of the fact that the pressure stays the same all the time unlike CO2 gas that has to kind of be watched and monitored and and uh, you have to keep an eye on your temperature but but high pressure air you really don't have to you get a full set of shots and then it just totally dies after that so you get like 60, 70, 80 shots or whatever your tank is full uh, with or whatever for your pressure. So I'm probably not going to get into the uh, QB79 series because I'm satisfied with this one for now. But if I do get into QB79, I'll fill you in on, on all the details and stuff like that. But uh, this camera I'm using right now isn't super high definition. It's 720. But uh, let me see if I can open the bolt here. And give you a peek in there. I don't know if you can see that well in there, but uh, so you're looking at the bolt probe. Um, now the factory one, you're just going to see 
what looks to be kind of like a tube that is the same diameter as the pellet, so it's just nothing but a tube. So it's nice to have that probe. When you load the pellet now, you don't want to load the pellet in the middle there. You want to put the pellet up towards the front and kind of kind of nudge it in with your finger and then close the bolt because uh, sometimes if you close the bolt on the pellet the whole distance you know it might go in uh, and hit the wall there or it might go in slightly crooked or something and get bumped around like the skirt so you want to make sure you put your pellet up as far as you can help it in help it in as far as it can then close that bolt so that's what you want to do. So anyway, I got my BSA scope on here. This is a, I believe this is a 6 to 24 by 40. So very nice scope. It's got the triangle reticle on it. So I put this on just to put it through its paces today just to see what I can do. And uh, once again, the accuracy out of the box is pretty impressive here. So it's amazing. So this one here is going to be a very, very fun rifle, especially in the summer. If you guys are shooting cans or something at 50, 50 or 60 yards or something, this might be a fun little rifle that you could uh, plink with. And uh, one of the good things about this is it's really hard to believe the price. Uh, for instance, uh, for instance, this one here, I got the... Uh, gold service with it which is like an extra twenty dollars but the rifle is about probably I'd say about a hundred and ten or something like that and then with the gold service another twenty the reason why I got the gold service is because I I just uh, I just love signatures and I love when somebody actually inspects the rifle before I do so it's just I know it I know twenty dollars sounds a lot but uh, let me go get that paper really quick. So what I'll do is I'll cut off this part of the video and I'll go get that paper and show you what I'm talking about, the gold service. Okay, here we got the gold service and basically what they do is they take the rifle out and they check everything and uh, they run it through the crony and uh, shoot some pellets and stuff, about 10 of them at 10 yards. And this is done on the iron sights by the way. So obviously if you have a scope you're going to get better results. And then down here you'll see where they shot in. This square is a half inch by the way. Right here, that square. So they got 10 pellets. You know, probably within the half inch zone at 10 yards and that's iron sights. So you can't expect much, uh, you know, if somebody's got good eyes, it helps. But uh, anyway, uh, the Stoger X Field was used. These are 8.64 grain pellets. These these kind of like look like the Beeman uh, Silver Sting pellets or Spitzkugel from H&M. That's what them are. They're pointed pellets. So anyway... Um, the standard deviation on the crony is 7.74. Uh, the muzzle velocity average 691.37. So anyway, they just kind of do this for you. And uh, and we got the trigger pull, which, uh, like I told you before, a very sweet light trigger pull. Two pounds, one ounce. Like I was saying, the 747 Daisy that I have, the competition pistol. I've got that set down to one pound, and I swear that this one is almost one pound. It's just... Uh, it's really nice. Uh, I mean, if a fly lands on it, it won't go off, but a June bug, it will. So it's not, it's definitely a safe trigger. But I'm just saying, you get a big bug sitting on it, it's going to go off. So, but that is sweet. The trigger, though, you guys, it's amazing. And then here's the print up on all the whole 10 shot string. Now, I have a crony. I can do all this myself. I've verified rifles myself the same way they do here but I just like having this as kind of like a you know kind of like a, a something I can remember you know for the years to come like I can remember that uh, guy named Mike 
tested my rifle out on October 7, 2015. And he put the temperature down, he, you know, checked it out, make sure everything was working properly. So that's why I like that. So, so for $20 you get this and you get the security of knowing that they tested it out. Took a look over the rifle, make sure everything was working fine. So, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm probably going to do a lot more shooting with this rifle. So, um, you want to get the bolt probe kit, you can put that in yourself. So if you want to buy the rifle or something, you know, uh, the standard rifle, you know, like I said, it's about $100. And then this one here, just for having this coloring right here, and then the fiber optic sights, it's only like, I'd say another $10. So the Deluxe, you know, is really nice to have. And uh, they, have, they have another one that isn't the Deluxe, that's just the standard one that comes with a... Uh, uh, 3 to 9 by 32 scope and the thing that's cool about that scope is the eyepiece or the bell right up here you can adjust the parallax even though it's non-adjustable it's considered a non-adjustable scope it's adjustable magnification but up in the bell here you can loosen up the eyepiece and you can put it at 10 yards and you can move the eyepiece until you see a clear picture and then it's got a 10 yard parallax so I've done that with my 3 to 9 by 32 scopes before also. So anyway, um, yeah, it's a really beautiful rifle. Um, I'm surprised a lot of more people wouldn't get this. Now, if you look online, Umarex has got a, um, a CO2 rifle, but here's the problem with Umarex and all these other companies. They give you a rifle, but you don't have parts. This one, you don't have to worry. You can rebuild everything by yourself with very little tools and uh, they're quite uh, Archer Air Guns is quite generous I would say in the area of seals and re, you know reseal kits and stuff like that um, they usually give you quite a bit and I've noticed that the prices for parts isn't gouging or anything like that so it's kind of nice and you can see down here the bolt probe o-rings there's two of them in here so you got two extra right here. You got you got a few extra O-rings for some other parts on the gun here too. So that's kind of nice. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the trigger is just is just too sweet on this thing that uh, I'm thinking I'm probably going to get addicted to this one. I do shoot the Daisy 953 target rifle, which is a very very fine rifle. The problem is if you're if you're not used to getting if you're not that well into getting used to triggers like I am, I've shot rifles with the hardest trigger pulls out there, even 10 pounds and higher on some target uh, air rifles like my Mendoza, which is very, very accurate despite the hard trigger pull because it's such a heavy gun. But uh, you get used to your trigger pulls and stuff like that. This is really nice to have uh, for a relief, you know, knowing that my gosh, I don't have to study the trigger and find out the best way to pull it or anything. You just take up a little bit of slack here and the thing just goes off like a surprise break. You don't even know when it's going to go off. So when you're holding your breath for them a couple seconds while you're pulling to the rear, uh, it'll go off uh, without even letting you know about it. So so that's what's nice. It's, it's unpredictable. I like unpredictable triggers. So it's kind of nice. So all you have to do is, is concentrate on your breath and, and uh, your crosshair, staying perfectly steady, let the vibration get out of the table, and stuff like that. So you always want to take a few seconds just to totally relax and be steady. But yeah, the trigger is really nice. So I don't think I'm going to play around with the trigger. Some of you guys... You know, might want to have a kit or something, or you might want to take it apart and do some adjustments on it. But I find no reason to mess with that trigger. Uh, I think messing with that trigger any further, I would I would say that you're getting kind of like in a risky area. You know, of bumping the gun. You know, like this, you just tap on the gun and it'll go off. That kind of thing. You don't want that happening. So, so I'd say two pounds would be fine. You know. It's two pounds, one ounce uh, on the trigger right now is what it is. So, 
But anyway, you know me, I don't prepare for these videos. You know, I'm not a professional or anything. I just tell you what, what's going on, you know, with my rifles and stuff and how they're performing. And I have been shooting for ever since I was a kid, air rifles, different kinds. So so I can tell you from experience that uh, if you if you were going to get a rifle like this, you'd really love it, uh, if you, especially if you're a customized person, if you'd like to play around and do some gunsmithing of your own maybe make a really really nice wood stock chop off the barrel move the muzzle brake up recrown the barrel or you can buy a whole new barrel you can buy a whole new barrel for this rifle you can buy a muzzle brake you can buy three different stocks for it a target stock a field stock and a standard stock which is this right here um, you can buy a bolt probe kit you can buy internal parts like the, the chamber uh, part you know where the valve is you can buy all them little parts you buy a hammer kit I mean just everything on this rifle you can buy literally any day of the week and it's always available you can buy a side lever kit a side lever kit is where you pull like this you pull it out like this and if you're a lefty you can actually um, you can actually buy parts that puts this bolt on the other side so that's kinda nice you know weaver rail you can buy one of them uh, you can buy a special rail just for target sites for peep sites for like 10 meter matches that come up here and then you got the front you got the front piece right there with the with the different pieces that you can take in and out and then back here you'll have a, a diopter a diopter type uh, sight that you would find on your 10 meter rifles so there's a lot you can do with this rifle so it's really really amazing the kind of things you can do with this so but it's a lot of fun got an easy trigger pull and uh, for the stock right here you got this bolt makes it really really a cinch to switch stocks so if you have three or four different custom stocks for a certain day like you want to go field shooting one day you want to be bench rest one day you know for bench rest you can buy the flat stock which is perfectly flat right here and then for the field you can buy the thumb stock which gives you a hole right up in this area so it's kinda nice but anyway hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I showed you enough here and uh, the pellet velocities and stuff all you have to do is uh, do your calculations on energy and foot pounds and uh, you can find out you know what the energy in foot pounds is I'll probably I'll probably uh, uh, show a list of energy in foot pounds for this rifle on my Google Plus page so if you're on the Google Plus page and you're looking around on there I'm probably gonna post all that detailed information about muzzle velocity and what you need for different yardages and stuff but uh, pretty much this rifle here this is this will really get out there um, this will get out there in range you know she does anywhere from the heaviest pellet 510 the lightest is about 800 something like that 821 so somewhere in between there you got 650 feet per second six or 700 in between there which is which is going to be fine it, it's going to get you out to 75 yards it's not going to have a lot of energy but you're going to be able to uh, you know to be able to plink some things at longer ranges so it's gonna be a lot of fun so anyway thank you very much for watching